Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. This is Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. We're gonna show you how to tie a Euro style leggy copper john today. So quite a few materials on this pattern, uh, but it's a fun one to tie and a very effective fly. This is the Daiichi 4647 jig hook. And along with that, I have an MFC tungsten bead, the slotted tungsten bead on there, the copper color. From there, we're gonna add a little bit of lead wire, lead free wire, the 010 diameter, just a few wraps. And then we're gonna use a little bit of pearl tinsel along with some scud backing, eighth inch scud backing for the back of the fly. And then underneath that on the thorax, we'll have some of the peacock curl as well as the MFC centipede legs for a little bit of uh, a different aspect to this fly, the yellow, black, and red combination color here. So I have my hook in the vise and we've put a bead on there, the tungsten bead, this is the copper color. And I added five wraps of the O and O lead or lead free wire. Just depending on what kind of weight you're looking for on this fly, you can play with that, add or remove, whatever you need to do there. So I'm gonna start my thread right behind where that lead wire ends and build up a little bit of a thread ramp just to keep everything secure. Start to work on that profile of this fly. So then we'll go up onto the lead wire there and secure it all in place. And then we can start to work our way back towards where we're gonna tie in the tail. And so on a Copper John, you have to be very aware of your thread wraps. Everything that you do on this hook shank here is gonna translate through when you uh, wrap your wire on top of it. So we're gonna just start clean and as we tie in our materials, we'll, we'll try and keep it as clean and, and the taper that we want as we're working towards that wire wrap. We'll go right back to where that hook bend starts and then I'm gonna bring my goose biots here, the brown goose biots. Got a pair of those. I'm just gonna cut them off of the, the stem, the quill, and line them up. Make sure that they're the same length there, right about, just like so. And then I got them flared outward so that they splay away from each other. Can measure right about the hook shank length for our tail and then come back and secure these in right on the sides of the hook. And we can work our way back, just keep them where you want them. You can play with them a little bit as you go. As you've seen me, if you've seen any of our other videos, I'm sure you've seen me tie in some goose bot tails before. So once we have those fixed, we'll work our way up here a little bit. I always like to use the biots kind of in my favor here to uh, help that gradual body taper up onto the lead wire. Sometimes I'll even come in and trim them right about where that lead wire stops. And it just helps you, helps you create your body. So we'll wrap those down, nice and secure. And then we're gonna come back in and add our wire. I'm gonna do a red color of this fly today. It's traditionally a copper color, that's the name, Copper John. Uh, but it's also done in reds and greens and lots of other color combinations out there. So we're gonna take our wire here right up to the bead and secure that in. And I like to tie it all the way up to the bead just again uh, then you don't have a bump right where that, that wire would end in the middle of your abdomen. It goes all the way through and keeps it nice and, and clean. So work our way back here slowly, keeping everything neat. It's really just an attractor fly. It, it doesn't necessarily mimic anything in particular. Whether you got some stone flies, larger mayflies, Whatever it may be, you can put this in front of fish and it works more often than it does not. So all the way back to where our tail is, where that wire goes, and then I'm just gonna kinda, again, clean things up going forward here. 
looks like so. Nice smooth taper as best you can. All the way up. And I'm going to go back and go up one more time here just to kind of even things out if I can. Looks like we got a little bit of a foldier part there, so I'm going to work back forward and even that out just a little bit. There we are. That might be pretty good. So we'll come up and we're going to half hitch out. Just like so. And start to wrap our wire around. I always like to counter wrap. I just kind of am in the habit of counter wrapping my wire. Because in a lot of patterns you do that to uh, help secure another material that you might have wrapped uh, the traditional way, the clockwise. So this is a counterclockwise method. And we're just going to keep nice touching wraps as we go forward. So what I like to do is I actually kind of hold it back behind, if you can see, wires is a little bit behind where my wraps are going to be and what that does is it kind of forces the, the piece of wire behind it to, to lay it just in front of where you're going, so keeps it keeps it nice and tight. The more you do these, the better you'll get at it with the, the wrapping and keeping the gaps out of there. It can be pretty tough sometimes to to avoid that cappage, it really comes down to the underbody. See there, I kind of have a, a divot in the body where it goes down so that piece of wire doesn't necessarily want to lay back flat, but give it a wrap and then maybe see if we can get our fingernail to help minimize that gap anyways. Wrap all this, this all the way up to where our thorax is going to be. So right about there, uh, probably a, a third of the, the hook shank again on this uh, thorax and abdomen division. And maybe we'll go one more. There we are. Come back and capture that down with our thread. And just make sure it's secure before we come in and bend it off of there. You know, just scrub your wire. This is the brassy size, so sometimes it's a little bit harder to get the brassy to break for you, but there it goes. It still will do it for you. And now we're ready for our backing material. So the first thing we're going to tie in is a little bit of this flash blue tinsel and pearl. And just one quick strand of it here. Just a nice little piece of uh, attractant. And that's going to go right on the top of our fly here manage that. There we are. Quick wraps to secure that and then we'll come in and we're going to add some backing. And I like to clip my backing kind of to a point. This makes it a little bit easier to tie in. Right on top of the hook. And what I like to do is try and keep it so that that tinsel is going to be somewhat centered when we pull it all forward towards the uh, end of the fly here. And you can pull it up and kind of see where it's going to land and just find that sweet spot of your thorax versus your abdomen. So that's pretty good there. We're going to leave those kind of hanging out of the way for now and add some of our peacock curl and just tie it in on the side here. That'll be the main aspect of the thorax. Let's make sure it's nice and secure. And then we'll clean it up a little bit, give ourselves a nice working base. Okay, so now that we got our thread in position there, right in the middle of the thorax, I'm gonna come in and measure out my legs. So I want them to be right about the hook shank. And uh, that'll be my tie-in point. So it'll be twice that length. And just the, the hook shank going back and coming forward as well. So right on the side of the hook in the middle of this thorax with a couple of quick wraps there. And we'll do one in front just to keep them from moving on me. And then I can come out the front and do the same thing on the other side. I want to be kind of pointing down, the front legs to be sort of pointing down into the water. And 
we mirror that on the side closest to you guys, just like so. And then we can jump in front and go up to behind our bead where we're going to half hitch. And then wrap our peacock roll for our thorax there. So you can play with your legs and make sure you got them where you want them. Before you start wrapping that peacock, you can use the peacock curl as well to kind of position them exactly how you'd like them. It'll work for now. I'm going to trim out some excess on that just to keep it out of the way. There we go. Those ones. Right where I would like them. That'll be all right. And then we're going to grab our peacock and leave the backing materials out of the way still for now. This will be the underbody of the thorax. Let's get our thread out of the way here though. Throw that on the bobbin cradle and start wrapping. So now that we got that wrapped, we're going to capture it with our thread. Just like so. And make sure it's nice and secure there. And clip out that excess material. Before we bring over the backing material. I'm going to trim out my legs before I do that, so I'm going to just pull them kind of all upward so that I can clip them all at once, nice and even. I don't want to pull on them at all or stretch them or anything, just kind of line them up straight up as best you can and then clip them all nice and even. So then we're ready to bring this backing material right over the top. Using the black scud back today, you could do some clear or different colors based on the, the fly that you're trying to get after. But keep it nice and centered, and I like to snug on it just a little bit, keep it tight, but not too much, because then when you cut it, it can go back on you and slip out from underneath your, your thread wraps, which can be a little frustrating. So we'll clip that out right on top here. And if you got a little bit hanging out, that's not a problem because we're going to finish it off with some fly finish here. So we'll cover all that up. I'm going to bring the tinsel up now. That's our flashback on this fly. Just like so. Secure everything in, clip out our excess. Looks pretty good. And then we can whip finish. Pull your legs out of the way and whip finish, just like so. And then the final aspect of this sweet little fly is just some UV clear finish. I'm going to use the thick. This is the uh, least viscous of the loon UV tying uh, finishes which is great for these copper johns or anything that you're trying to build up a nice thick backing on. That came out of there pretty hot. Um, just because it is so thick, it's not going to move around too much on you. So you can build up quite a bit and have that nice clear backing. So put some on there, trying to avoid that bubble that's coming out of there. I don't want that in there. There we go. So finish there. I'm going to flip it upside down and, and let it kind of bubble up and then I'm going to use my dummy needle, my bodkin on it here and just move it around a little bit, kind of make it a gradual step up off of the wire there, pull it all the way up onto the bead and just get it to kind of be positioned how you want it. The thick you can work with pretty good without it running on you which is really nice. So once you're happy with kind of the bubble that you got there, that's not too bad. Just give it a zap with your UV light. 
I like to make sure that I have a new battery in my UV light. It tends to help cure the um, the UV fly finishes that I use. You can also hit them with the with the light for a few seconds, and that's going to be nice and hard. Um, and then, you know, if you got the time, set them out in the sun and just bake them for a little bit. Make sure that that hardens up real nice and uh, sticks to your materials and all that really well. But there's the finish. Actually, I'm going to trim these legs just a little bit more, make them a little bit shorter. There we are. Those are finished. Euro style, leggy, Copper John in red. Sweet little fly. Fish sure do love it.